Here's the idea of the Big Bang Theory, th folks. All mass, everything in the whole universe was in this tiny microscopic dot. And then it exploded and here we are. But here, here's the scientific definition of the singularity, which is that dot. With sufficient mass, gravitational attraction within the matter, uh, within matter itself overcomes all other forces and matter begins to collapse. This has never been demonstrated ever. There is no machine on the planet that can take this pulpit and compress it into a microscopic dot. But we believe that the entire universe and all the mass in it has been compressed into a microscope. I mean, what kind of pressures must we be talking about? Can you imagine? Can someone take this chair and compress it into a microscopic dot? What kind of pressure must we be able to generate to do something like that? Well, the answer, folks, is simple. Infinity. They say it's infinity pressure. I'll keep reading for you. The matter continues to collapse to a point that is known as a singularity. The point has infinite mass and density, and it is infinitely small. What is something that is infinitely small? If you're a technical person, you realize this is a ridiculous statement right here. How small is it? It's infinitely small. What are you talking about? This absurdity would get you nowhere in life in the real world. Imagine going into a job interview to an electrical company that makes batteries. And you walk into that company and you say, I want to invent a battery with infinite energy density. They'll just walk you right out the door. I mean, they won't even take you seriously. Matter if you, imagine if you were an engineer working at a structural company that builds bridges. You build overpasses and all these great structures that you see around Fresno and LA. And I mean, California is, a, is an engineered society. It's got some amazing structures, amazing things that, that men have built, men have designed and done. Imagine if you went into a structural company that built bridges and highways and you went in there and say, I can build a bridge that's infinitely strong. They would laugh at you. They would laugh in your face. They would not give you 30 seconds of time. I looked up the tallest building in the world a few days ago. It's the Burj Khalifa. And I found out yesterday that the company that designed this, one of our own church members used to work there. Brother Jeff used to work at this company. This is a building. It is the tallest building in the world. And it is in Dubai, I believe. It's over 2,700 feet tall. That's over a half a mile tall. Think about this for a second. Think about the, the mathematical problem that this would be to build a building like this. That's over a half a mile tall, and it just think it has to hold people in it safely. It's got to hold up to wind and dust storms and whatever happens in that environment. What if there's an earthquake? It has to be designed to handle all those stresses. And look, I've worked at at a place that had chimneys that were six, almost 700 feet tall. And they were concrete structures. And when you get to the top of those concrete structures, the structures are actually moving two feet in every direction, just due to wind. They have to be designed. I mean, does concrete flex? It sure does. Only so much, though. So it has to be designed to the point where it won't fall over. It won't break. I can't imagine what that building is doing at the top. But it's moving. I guarantee you that. But it's designed to move. It's designed. Imagine if you went into that company and you went into SOM or whatever the company's name is in San Francisco and you said, I want to work here and I want to build a building that is infinitely tall. This would not work anywhere, but this is what everybody believes. That, this, is, this is science today. Science today has left the building of reality. I mean, they won't even have a conversation with you in the real world if you believe these types of things. Yet this is what's being taught to kids in school. This is what's being taught at universities. This is all the conversations are about is complete nonsense. That's why I used to say, this is why science in the last hundred years, science has produced nothing. You say, how are we still building something? How are we still designing things and building society? Because thank God we have engineers. But the scientist, of 120 years ago used to be an engineer. That's, they, they were engineering minds. The scientist today has become this theoretical peddler of nonsense today.